Hi and welcome to the 2019 paper one of the Leaving Cert Order Level. This is question five. As usual, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. The email address should be in the description below. And I'd suggest pausing this, just having a go. Okay, so if you're back, this part is worth uh, 15 marks. And question five is saying that Harry draws a scale diagram of the portion of his garden that's covered in lawn. I screen printed this or screen grabbed it from the uh, exam paper. Um, so the, the, the it's a little bit different than how it looks in the actual exam paper, but not hugely. But it's saying that the diagram below, okay, it's saying that each box in the grid is one centimeter by 0.5. Okay. So that's one centimeter there by 0.5 this way. Okay, so the two of those boxes together basically give a centimeter. I was actually making this video before and I kind of messed up in, 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 in talking about that. So we were told in order to estimate the area of the lawn, Harry divides it into eight sections. Each one of those centimeters on the box is three meters. So that's, even though it's one centimeter on the graph, that's three meters in reality of what the garden actually looks like. Now part A says use the trapezoidal rule to estimate the area of the lawn um, using that scale of one centimeter equals three meters. And the trapezoidal rule there is given to you in the maths tables. Okay, so I've just taken a screen print of it and put it into the question uh, here. That isn't given to you on the exam paper in the exam. You have to remember that it's in the maths tables. So just to point out where that is, okay, so if you kind of, if you're, you have your graph, your graph, or your math table is open, you always just scroll down through each of the sections. Scroll down, after a few pages, you'll come to the trapezoidal rule. Okay. And the H stands for the interval, which is the difference between the sections here. The Y1 is the first bit, then Y2, Y3, Y4, it's all the way, as many segments as there are. This formula is trying to get across that. Okay. So Y1 we say is zero. Y2 is so the one, two, three, four, five centimeters. That's what that means. The next one is six. Yeah, six there, then five, then four, then five, then six, and again five. And the last one there, there's none. So if you remember that they said each one of those centimeters is the equivalent of three meters. So no centimeters by three meters is still no no meters. 5 by 3 is 15, 6 by 3 is 18, and yada yada. So we end up with all these points here. Now they get substituted into your formula. So our interval was 1 centimeter. Okay, that's your 3 here. That's your three, equivalent of 3 meters. Y1 is 0. That's the first one. There it is actually. Just make it simpler. So the Y1 is 0. That's here. The Y2 was. Uh, sorry, the y n is the last, sorry, this first plus last. Y n is the last one, which is this one here. Then twice, okay, so two times all the rest of them. So the first one there was 15 plus the 18 plus the 15. Again, all those figures I have written uh, out here. Basically, they're added together. Okay, I can put the whole thing in the calculator. Okay, I ended up with 324. I gotta remember that the units there are meters, and because it's an area that they're squared, or else I might lose like a mark uh, for not having that information there. Okay, so that's question five, part A. Okay, so that's part A. Now part B here is asking us now for ten marks. It's saying that Nula can walk at a speed of one point six meters per second. Okay, so. That's probably not a familiar unit of, of speed for most people. 
and if you're a physics person, okay, write this speed in kilometers per hour. So it's like a conversion. Um, so you're looking at kilometers per hour. Now, it's not as actually as hard as you think it is, okay? Um, there's two different conversions here, from meters to kilometers and from seconds to hours. So we need to know what those conversion factors are. So I've written them out here. One kilometer is the same thing as a thousand meters. One hour is the same thing as 60 minutes. Obviously, one minute is the same thing as 60 seconds. So if we want to find out how many seconds in one hour, it's 60 times 60. So there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. Okay, so we're trying to convert 1.6 meters okay, uh, into kilometers. And we're going to divide the 1.6, we'll divide that by 1,000 to go in that direction. Okay, now you'd, once it's, if you want to do it both ways, 1.6 times 100 will give me 1,600 meters. Doesn't necessarily make sense. Okay, with one thousand, give me a much um, different answer than that. Uh, I'm going to convert the seconds to hours, so I'm going to divide that by three thousand six hundred to do, to do that conversion. Now, when I do that um, calculation, I end up with uh, five point seven six kilometers per hour. Now, if you put that through the common sense meter um a bit fairly fast walk but um it's not crazy okay someone could be cycling i would be cycling at like even only an average speed like 20 kilometers per hour so it'd be the equivalent of like three miles per hour okay which wouldn't be you know outrageous be fast or slow so it makes sense basically is the, is the, is the, is the answer and that's it so it's, it's worth having practice like conversions okay Again, if you do it both ways, you're going to end up with two different, very different answers, and only one of them will make sense. That's, I won't say it's an effective strategy, but it's often how a lot of people do conversions, and they just can use their common sense to go which way it worked. Um, there can be better methods for, for, for doing that, but, um, or other methods, maybe not better. Anyway, that's question B, so that's question five, I think. Okay, so thank you very much, and see you on question six.